Welcome to Big Talk. I have a special guest with me today. Uh, it's none other than the former governor of uh, Delta State, my own state, and His Excellency Dr. Emmanuel Eweta Uduha. Welcome to my show, sir. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Well, uh, it's been a while. Some people will say you've been uh, out of the hot seat as governor of uh, Delta State. Um, how is life now? Should I say semi-retirement? They say that uh, the old soldiers never die, they just <laughs> fade away. But I know that politicians, they never die too. <laughs> well, uh, thank you, um, Sam. Uh, and thank you for having me. Well, um, yes, I left office over two years ago. Uh, it's been a different ball game, but more the quiet side, you know. Um, I think now I know that there are two experiences. Experience in office and experience out of office. And you were in office for a long time. Yes, I was <laughs> in various offices, commissioner, commissioner SSG, 16, 16 years. 16 yeah, and, years. I, uh, and I came out and I just thought I needed some time to wind down or to cool down. So I took almost a year, in fact, over a year. Um, reflect on what has happened uh, through the period, uh, be able to. Uh, with my family, you know, we connect on a lot of areas. You know, that the, the, the way the job is, mm -hmm. a lot of disconnects with the family, even the immediate family, yeah. and especially my grandchildren, you know, we want to reconnect with them and, of course, also take care of my health and all that. So um, that took quite over a year. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm now need to come back into the society mm -hmm. in various ways. Um, one of the things that anybody thinks about when somebody has handled uh, an important position such as yours is, uh, is the issue of legacy. Now, with two years on, well, how would you describe as your real legacy as, uh, as a governor and also as a man who has worked in the thick of things in Delta State? Well, uh, I usually have challenges with talking about legacy, uh, but talking about uh when people say, okay, what, what we remembered for, and mm -hmm. all that. <laughs> Whether they are the same, I don't know. Uh, but I tell people that uh, it depends on who is remembering me. Um, I had programs across programs on infrastructure, uh, programs on uh, uh, human capital development, uh, and of course, uh, programs on peace. You know, um, if, if like one of our, our social programs, the, the Free Maternal Health Care Service, uh, there are there are, I know today there are women who gave their children Udwa mm -hmm. because they were able to deliver their children free in, in the hospitals. Um, whereas there are people who remember me for some of the uh, pink infrastructure, like the mm -hmm. Asaba Airport. Mm -hmm. I recall a woman who saw me uh, somewhere and immediately knelt down, thanking me. I said, <laughs> she was older than me, and I said, ah, why? She said, look, but I don't, I don't know what I did for her by starting us at her airport. You know, she used to fly to, I mean, she used to go to Benin mm. to take flight and all that. And she was involved in an accident once. Mm. You know, people didn't know where she was for three, three days. Mm. Uh, but now she can fly from Asaba straight to Lagos, you know. So she, that for her, that, that was um, a, a legacy. So we looked at our, 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 our programs, you know, in such a way that uh, uh, we looked at the human beings from when the day of conception to the day you enter the grave. How does government affect you or influence, influence your life? So we have various legacy programs. Mm. Well, legacy is also a very important thing. And how your, your successors handle your legacy sometimes um, affect how those legacies shape up in the long run. Are you worried about some of the ways your successors have uh, acted as, as far as some of your legacies are concerned, even including the Asaba Airport? Uh, naturally, what is worried, <laughs> and that is why you see that uh, uh, sometimes when you sit there, you, you are concerned about who is taking over from you. Yes. you know? um, when the person is taking over from you, does not really have, um, uh, does not actually believe in your vision, mm. uh, then it becomes a problem. Uh, for me, well, well I'm, I'm still watching. Uh, just as of things that um, are currently not uh, are currently being um, handled in such a way that 
they seem to be wiping away some things that I, I sincerely believe in and I think we should continue. Yeah, like what? Um, well, <laughs> the, 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 you know, let, let me say this. As a human being growing up in a village, I sincerely believed and I still believe that a government should be a government of social justice. And what do I mean by that? We are still in a third world country where I believe that a lot of things should still be done for the people, if you like a rural population. We seem to think a lot of the time of the elites and the urban. And the urban. But there are a lot of things that the rural population or the poor require, which I call social justice. You know, in the area of healthcare, for instance, we have a lot of women who are still dying because they cannot afford the hospital um, 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 services. And what happens? They go to the quacks and the children die. Yes, there's no money, there's no money. Um, but I believe that um, some things can be done. It's not just all about money. But uh, if there's no money, you can meet certain programs halfway, you know. So those are, those are some of the things I'm talking about. The issue of uh, things that affect, affect the poor. Now, where, where I came for instance, I said, look, when you enter public transport in Delta Den, mm. you'll be seeing the road. You know, when you look down, right. you, <laughs> you remember, see you, see, you <laughs> see the road. Uh, okay. why just, just barely yeah, your and as you are entering your, your clothes, you know, you hook your clothes and they got cut up and, and, and they tear. And I said, no, that should change. And uh, we tried as much as possible to bring in new buses initially, then even new buses, you know, close to a thousand buses. Plus it even crash the fare. You know, at, at, at the time when there was fuel increase and uh, uh, public transportation was going up. We purposely subsidized our own uh, transportation mm -hmm. in such a way that it affected even the private owners. They could not increase their fare. Mm -hmm. you know. Why? Because I believe that the, 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 the poor man should not be so badly influenced mm -hmm. with an increase uh, of the fair price. Mm -hmm. You know, so those are the things I, I'm talking about. We, 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 we thought about the poor and we did a lot of uh, programs to affect their lives. Do you believe that your, your successor is not taking those things seriously? Well, I think he's trying to use, uh, because of course there's a paucity of uh, funds, mm. uh, um, uh, he, he's trying to work around them. Mm. Um, but let's see how it goes. Now, one of the legacies you didn't mention is um, probably not uh, a hardcore uh, legacy, but something that is seen as moral, economic, and even intellectual. That is uh, what you uh, enunciated as uh, first as Delta without oil, and then you said Delta beyond oil. Mm -hmm. Looking at what has happened to oil, you know, do you see yourself as a prophet? But even at that, some people have said, well, if he saw himself as a prophet, he didn't bring Delta to a stage where it had to live without oil. But he just mentioned it. No, you see, people did not quite understand. And I was surprised that even for professors don't yes. understand. Yeah. Delta Beyond Oil is not a project. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not a construction of a road. You know, it's a lifelong philosophy, philosophy mm -hmm. for the state forever and ever. Mm -hmm. So it's not something, oh, you just do, uh, there's a data beyond your standard there. No, 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 no. A lot of things put together. And that was why we try to do things mm. that, you know, we make us go into other areas of the economy, mm. apart, from, fr apart from the oil. Mm. We try to go into infrastructure, mm. you know, power, uh, transportation, roads, airports, and, yeah. and, and, and of course, ICT. We, we, and agriculture. We, you know, uh, we try to go into, uh, um, Human capital development, being able to educate our children, mm -hmm. even giving first class uh, uh, children scholarship. scholarship. We're giving them five million every year, mm -hmm. automatic, mm -hmm. you know, until, on, on, until I left. Those are things to enhance the capacity of our people, 
you know. And with all those improvements, of course, the other area that I must emphasize, you know, there be oil, uh, beyond oil, was your peace and security. Mm. You know, because without peace and security, you, 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 there will be no investment. Then what, are the fo what were the focus areas? Education, I mean, uh, sorry, agriculture. You know, people going back, going back to the farm. So with time, as people begin to see other areas of uh, development economy apart from the oil, we, are, we will gradually be achieving delta beyond oil. It's not, it's not a one day program, it's not a one day project, it's not mm. uh, all kind of hardcore project. Mm. You know, it's, it's a lo lifelong philosophy. And I'm happy that today, it has become very, very... Resonant. For, for every, everybody. Yes. The old Nigeria now is shouting Nigeria with, uh, oh, beyond oil. Yes. Nigeria beyond oil. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 it's it's uh, something that I think we all should... It, it's not just um, a mantra, you mm -hmm. know. It's something we all should sit down and, and uh, deal with. Recently, there was a conference of uh, Southeast governors and uh, South-South governors. And if you are in power, uh, I think you have been one of them. Um, they have also lent their voice to this general uh, debate on restructuring. And in fact, they were also represented at the meet at Ibadan uh, recently, where the West, the Southwest, said that they were going back. They wanted to go back to the 1963 Constitution, which is the reintroduction of regionalism. Uh, how do you put your, lend your voice on this debate on restructuring? Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> I look at restructuring in various forms. People have their own ways of, uh, yeah. uh, there's this geographical restructuring. That's yes. why we talk about Southeast, it's Southwest, South -West, and uh -huh. of course, Midwest. It's, it's Midwest. to forget Midwest, Midwest. always. And yes. I insist that Midwest, because you see, when they say, you know, when I was in office, yes. we also had this meeting of South, South, South and South East. Yes. Now, once in a while, I used to tell them that look, as Delta, we're also Southwest. Yes. They <laughs> do yes. Southwest. Yes. Uh -huh. So when it really comes to the, the, the real meat of regionalism, mm. we also identify with Southwest. Mm. We can never forget that. We can never forget that because we came out of Southwest. Yes. Yeah. So back to what we're saying. Now that is on the issue of geographical entity. This, mm. you know. but see, for me, um, yes, it has it has its advantages. Regional administration has its advantages. Also has its disadvantages. But I think it would be very difficult to move back to that that type of uh, uh, Southwest, Southeast. And, and all that. Restructuring for me is more of federal, state, and local government. Who does what and what goes to where? If you recall, uh, when I gave interview to the nation, when I was in office, yeah. I was one of the first proponents of this uh, state police. Yes. You know? I remember. <laughs> you remember? I remember. Uh, and then I had a lot of bashing. Yes. But I, did, I had no apology for saying it. And today everybody is talking about state, state police, police yes. you know, because to reduce the crime in this country, you need state police mm. to monitor people locally. Somebody, like I said, somebody from Sukutu coming to, to Delta to monitor who is an armed robber, who is a kidnapper, the person is a stranger, you know, but somebody from Delta, yeah, look me, I look you, I know your family, you know my yeah. family. So it's, it's, quite, it's quite easier to... to, to if to, you misbehave, you can't join Yes, you, you can't join us. <laughs> you know, so it's quite, it was quite, it's quite easier to handle. So what, I'm, what I'm saying is that in terms of restructuring, uh, I think the federal government is still carrying, the, the weight of the federal government is still too heavy. Right. Uh, we think there should, uh, should be uh, load shedding to the states and to, 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 the, to the local government council. That's the kind of restructuring I think that is quicker to achieve. You know, the one of the regional issue uh, is, is a more difficult thing to, to, to achieve. The West, the, the also the Westminster part of the uh, bargain, which is being pushed by the Southwest. the Southwest, that we should go back not only to regionalism, 
to what the 1963 constitution says, which means that we have to have not the presidential system, but the Westminster style where you have the prime minister and anybody who is in the cabinet must have been elected and stuff like that. And my own view about it is that the question is not about, about the system, but it's about us. Was it not the same system that collapsed and led to the uh, civil war? And what was your take? No, it, 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 it was it was system that um, that collapsed, but it did not collapse that badly. You see, the, 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 that that system, the Westminster system, um, you know, ensured that uh, people uh, were more cautious. You know, they, 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 because if if for you to be a minister, for instance, mm. uh, you have to be elected. You know, <laughs> if first of all come to come to the people, come to the people. They will elect you. Mm. Then it is from that that uh, house mm. that you now be made. You, you now be made minister. Yeah. Uh, it, it's all like now where somebody can be in, in the U.S. or London somewhere and, they just and has more connection and that, and jobs and come and it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't to owe anybody. Any <laughs> anything. anything apart from the the boss that has employed that appointed there. him, yeah. you know. So that 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 uh, feeling of oh, I'm also representing the people as a minister or as a commissioner is very reduced. Sometimes as governors, we have to force. We have to think, look, commissioner, you must go back home first, like I, I used to do. Yeah. I assisted that. I said, before I even appointed as commissioner, go back home. Oh, yeah. Yes, see your traditional ruler. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> see this, mm. see this. Uh, go and pay home, go and tell them this. And if if they the, the, the didn't agree, because I have one or two cases where you deal with traditional ruler, they don't agree that, oh, this man should be a commissioner. Of course, that was the end, you know, because I also need those people. Yes. To be able to manage the states, yes. and if you already have a conflict with the officials, yes. to be difficult. <laughs> yes, it, 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 it. so I, I think for me, really, if we can go to the parliamentary system, you know, sometimes when I just um, when, I, when, I, when I when I tune to BBC on on, uh, on Wednesdays, when the prime minister has to, you know, uh, answer questions in, in the floor of. of uh, by 12 noon, uh, I, I remember the prime minister time, the hour. Yeah, yeah that, that prime minister hour. Yes, I mean it's quite interesting. Question right? time. Yes, question <laughs> time. And I my, I, I, I wish we had that kind, that kind of thing. Where would have gone to the house of assembly? Mm -hmm. You know, that there's, there's an interaction between me and the house of assembly, and everybody see us interact. You are just you are like uh, first among equals, equals prime minister you know, so because uh, when you are there, you are with them. Everybody is there. So then. you see the opposition. Uh. The, you see those with you and all that. I, I think that was that that system actually gives a robust that kind of robust debate improves the quality of governance. Well, there's another side to the story is that okay, so I cannot be minister unless I'm elected. Then the idea of getting elected becomes more desperate. Yeah. People become more ruthless. Mm -hmm. They spend more money in order to get elected because uh, I cannot be, be anything unless I get elected. So it seems that maybe we are setting, we'll be setting up our electoral system for a more difficult and more treacherous and more brutal era. No, 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 no Sam. <laughs> with, with, with time, everybody will get, will get used to it. Uh, it it's, it's better for everybody in government to owe allegiance to the people, the people rather, rather than, than to, to the person. boss. Yeah, I, 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 think, I think it's better. I, I always advocate that. You know, mm -hmm. um, I, I was I was appointed a commissioner. You know, and uh, I had to work my way back to the people. You know, mm -hmm. even as I say, I had to work my way back to the mm -hmm. people. They now beg them to make mm. me governor. Yeah. You know, so I know the difference between the two. Mm. You know, that's what I'm saying. That it's. I, I think it's if all, if everybody in government um, have that experience of going back home and be asked questions. Mm. You know, standing on the soapbox and being elected. At the end of the day, I think that the people will have more responsibility. Okay, now the issue of regionalism itself will create its problems. Doesn't mean that we have to collapse the states into regions or they have to create a special system. Are we not going to have the same number of governors? It's, it's, it's going to create its own problem. That is why, why people are even asking for more states. Yeah, that was why I was saying that the one of the regions, the structuring 
with the regional system. Mm. It's going to be a more complex and complicated process. You know, uh, what is easier to achieve, I would say, mm. we must do a restructuring mm. is the load shedding mm. of uh, responsibility at the federal level. We we'll say, oh, you want to go back to southwest, you want to go back to exactly. southeast. Now, the, the, the river state man will tell you, no, I don't want to be part of the southeast any longer. I want to be. So yeah. it, it's, it's going to be a, a little bit uh, uh, more complex. Mm. But even then, we, even without collapsing the state, we can meet ourselves midway. Um, we can also start thinking of a parliamentary system, mm. even at the way the states it's are now. Yeah. It's difficult. It's, it's, it's possible. It's possible. Mm. But we'll see how it goes. It goes. Yeah, one can describe you now as a PDP stalwart, with all in every definition of the word. And I'm saying this in regard to the recent um, meeting of the of the PDP in Abuja in which some of the stalwarts, whether it was the former governor, some former president, uh, good luck Jonathan, and even some of the past governors and so on, were all talking and they were talking up uh, a big game and they want to challenge, uh, challenge um, uh, APC. But the people have raised questions that, was it not PDP that brought us to this place? Why are they making noise? Well, it's a, yes, uh, so every politician must blow his ego. <laughs> if you don't blow a nobody will blow it for you. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I have my own attitude towards what is happening in the PDP, yeah. um, if I, what is happening politically in general. Um, I'm a foundation member of the PDP, and uh, I became commissioner, SSG, and governor through, through the party, the PDP. Well, so I, I, and I, I've said it, and I, I did, uh, even when I, as soon as I left office, um, that PDP included you know and uh, APC did not uh, <laughs> win the win election PDP PDP lost it, PDP lost it. Yes. <laughs> yeah because PDP had all the chance of winning that election six months to the election you know but um, PDP lost it uh, we, we, we uh, lost it through arrogance you know through maladministration mm. you know, and all, all sorts of things uh, so We've lost it. Have we learned? If you ask me, so today, have we learned our lessons as PDP. as PDP? Knowing what is going on, mm -hmm. I, I'm not. I, I cannot confidently say so. Why? That we, that we have, we have, we have, learned, we have lost, lost our lessons. You see, people are still yes. Police is game of power. Mm -hmm. You know, I still see. All sorts of uh, uh, muzzle flexing, uh, yes, uh, people insisting, oh, it must be this, it must be that. You know, there, there, there's no give and take, uh, you know, that uh, might go on. But the test of whether PDP will become stronger or not will be the convention yes. where the of officers are elected. As the yes, mm -hmm. and uh, people are already moving around, asking, okay, uh, asking for votes. Well, let's see how it goes. What they say about the PDP is that, um, look, look at uh, this, the, the, the oil was 110 to the, um, 110 for a barrel um, at one time. And they said that the PDP had the opportunity to do a lot of transformation in the country. And they didn't do that. And then towards the end, like two years to the end, uh, of the PDP era, we started seeing the price of oil tank was tanking repeatedly, and financing became very difficult. It was not good going as it as it used to be, and we were saying that PDP lost that opportunity. Yet, you can hear people in town say that well. During PDP time, I used to have money. At least when I wanted to send my child to school, I had some money. I could get money to go to school, and and I was not as hungry as I as I'm hungry now. And how do you reconcile these two? <laughs> no, no, no. The truth is that at that time, uh, there was more physical money available. Physical cash, mm, physical cash available. Yeah. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Yeah. Uh, it's not as available as now. Yeah. Now the barrel of oil is less than 50 
uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, fifty dollars uh, uh, per barrel, mm -hmm. uh, not compared to hundred mm -hmm. uh, uh, per barrel. Mm -hmm. Our budget size now, you mm -hmm. know, they are, they are different. So there was more fiscal cash then now. So people can tell you, oh, I had more money to do this, I had more money to do that. But you see, let, let, let me say this. Um, we just have to be careful. Because apart from a few persons in APC today, most of the players played through PDP. Yes. They were part of PDP. All of us <laughs> were part yes. of PDP. Uh -huh. Who became new PDP. <laughs> became new PDP <laughs> and eventually became APC. Yes. So, when I look at the politics in Nigeria, I'm not, I, I, I don't want us, I, I tell people that, look, we should not place too much emphasis on party. You know, we should place emphasis on programs. Because there's no socialist, there's no capitalist party in Nigeria. All of us are the same. Uh -huh. And you see the way the people flow from one party to the other. Because, well, because, because of ideology. Because of interest. <laughs> where, they, where are they comfortable? Where can I get them? So, APC must learn from what happened to PDP. APC must learn. Do you think APC is learning? We are watching. No, no, you must have it so far. <laughs> yeah, no, we are, we are watching. I, well, I would say uh, if, if there's anything that, is, that APC has achieved, that people are a little bit more cautious. Yeah, but people say that there are different APCs today, uh, different kind of APCs, different kind of loyalties. For instance, Atiku came out um, recently to say, that, uh, you know, he uh, worked with Buhari, helped put him there, spent money, uh, used his structure uh, as much as he could to help him get to power. And now the, he has been dumped. And yet we can say Atiku has some political machine that he can use, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that could have helped uh, Buhari get to power. So that's one. You have the Saraki people. You have the Burai, Buhari people, the southwest is neither here nor there. In the southeast, of course, south south PDP is uh, almost non existent, even uh, part of the Middle Belt. So, so, some people are saying that there is a lot of room for PDP to fish. But the question is whether PDP is ready. If a man, if, if, the people also say that some people can move from APC to PDP. Are those people who have remained in PDP since ready to absorb a man like Atiku or like all those people into their party? You see, let, let me say this, um, Sam. PDP has been in existence since 1998. Yes. It's the longest party in this Nigeria. Yes. Parties have come, merged, demerged, mm -hmm. got swallowed, but PDP has remained. The only party that I think that has remained from 1998 mm -hmm. when, when this new dispersion started. So, there is no word you go to in Nigeria today that you will not find PDP. Exactly. In terms of spread and grassroots, PDP has it. What the challenge with PDP is at the top. The management of the party at the top. It got to a point where people became very arrogant and all those sorts of things, you know. Uh, of course, people started, started moving out. Now, APC, yes, seem to be very not together in terms of <laughs> from your analysis. Mm -hmm. You know, different leaders having their different pools here and there. Uh -huh. that, 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 that is expected. But you see, what I usually advise is that it is better to, hold, to have government, struggle to have the government, than to lose government. PD people are now experiencing it. Uh, now they, they took it for granted. <laughs> they took it for granted. Yeah, yeah. Now they're out of government. Mm -hmm. Now they are struggling. Oh, uh, how do we mobilize people here? Just the, how do we even pay staff salary yes. in the secretariat? Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. those have become big challenges. Mm -hmm. You know, get the government. Whatever you are looking for in that in a particular government, it should not be a do or die affair. You know. First, it must be the interest of Nigeria, the interest of the people, mm. then before your personal interest. Mm. If you consider the interest of, of, of the people, the interest of Nigeria, and put your personal interest third, mm. you know, in that, in, that, in, that, in that order, then you will say, okay, this my party must survive in the interest of Nigeria, 
or must survive in the interest of the people. And if the survival of the party and the survival of the people, then my interest, I will be able to actualize my interest. Mm. If I don't get it, I will, I will not pull down the party. You know, if I don't get it, I'll try again. Mm. I, I believe that that's, that's the attitude I think we should, because all these people are mentioning now, what are they looking for after, after all? It's power, power. To, to become president or yes. you know, put somebody there yeah. as, 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 as president. And everybody cannot be president. We must understand that. Everybody cannot be president of Nigeria. Everybody cannot be governor of Delta, of, uh, Delta or Lagos State. Only one person can be at a time. So if, if, you, if, you've, if you've shown your ambition and you've pursued it and it's not working and somebody is there, it needs to support the person uh, or in such a way that, or in such a time that uh, if the person is not doing well, there's always room for change. Four years is very short. Very short. Even eight. <laughs> yes, even eight. eight. Yes. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, eight years is very short. Four years is shorter. Yes. You know, so it doesn't take time. The other, yes. the person will, will, will be almost. Uh, I, I don't believe that we should be um, um, moving in such a way that we, we, we scatter the structures at our ground. Now you talked about sacrificing oneself to get a position. I remember that you wanted to be in the Senate and uh, the politics of PDP at the top, including people like uh, uh, Ike Clark and President Jonathan, they stopped, they, they stopped it and then um, you didn't really fight it. And, and can you take us through that? Whether you were, you gave the point that you were, you were doing it because you wanted Peace rather than. Yes, uh, you see, the, 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 what is this life after all if you have to share blood, you know, to, to uh, attain power? Yes, if it's necessary to share blood, people do it. Uh, but I, I look at myself, uh, God has gracious enough for me to be commissioner, to be SSG, to be governor for 60 years. Uh, I would say, as at uh, uh, maybe as at, as at that time, I was the only person that had that kind of opportunity, you know, out of the four million deltas. Yes. Now, yes, I, I, had, I had, I thought of going to the Senate, but it wasn't a do or die ambition. But then I also had the challenge that, uh, you know, the Delta South, mm. we have the three military groups, mm. the Shekri, the Jo, and the Soko. Uh, we have some robots in, in, in Wari South. Mm. Now, you said it, Position has always been between those three ethnic groups, mm -hmm. you know, Shekri, Robo, I mean, Ijo, and Isoko, uh, between those three ethnic groups. Uh, it's been a form of rotation. Um, somebody has been there for about 12 years, mm -hmm. and um, of course, uh, the Shekiris, uh, the turn of the Shekiris to, 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 take to, to, to take it. Uh, and I had a dedicated interest. Now, one of the things that I worked very hard for even under Governor James Iburi, mm. he worked very hard for it. I worked with him, and when, I, when he, he left, I took it over for the peace and security mm. of the Niger Delta. Ethnic harmony between Ishakiri, Ijo, and Rubo. You know, it's, 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 it's a tripod, tri yes. Tripod tri 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 of the double list. Yes, uh, <laughs> the, we, we, he worked very hard for it. I continued, and uh, but when this when this Senate was was coming and everybody was uh, hustling for it, um, as a governor, you have opportunity, you have, you have a, you're able to gather intelligence, both the official intelligence and of course the unofficial one. And from the intelligence I was getting, you know, uh, it, the process might be bloody if I insisted, because the judge also still wanted it. You know, uh, although they had been there for, for 12 years, yeah. they were still insisting on, one, on getting it. And why were they insisting? They had the president, you know, on the <laughs> they had the president on their side. And that was John, <laughs> uh, John the um, manager. Yeah, manager was in the, Senate. in the Senate. But even then, they had the president on their side. So mm. I wanted to use that, uh, and I think there was a projection of uh, if uh, manager got it, of course, it would become the same majority. So they, was, they, they had, because of that, they, see, they were seeing that they, they, they would get it. Yeah. And it was getting to a point, my is my friend. Mm. The two of us can sit down and decide, oh, boy, go, boy, don't go him. But there were people behind us who were now pushing, pushing for it. 
And I know that some of the crises that have arisen from that area, there's some very little things like this. Combustible. Uh, 2003, uh, when Timmy Harriman, mm. called the House uh, Rep, rep. from the Wari Federal Constituency, yes. uh, the justice system said no, that it was their turn. Um, Shakri said no, this is our own. Yes. Of course, Timmy Harriman got it, mm. and that was the major crisis of 2003, that was the cause. Mm. Where a lot of Shakri villages were burnt, even Koko, mm. mm. you know, they came into Koko, yeah. children were killed and all yes, that and yes. all that. Um, yes, uh, Timmy Harriman entered after four years, she left. Mm. But those people that died, they never came back. Mm -hmm. The houses that were destroyed, so are still not being built today. So I asked myself, yes, I could have been, I would, it was possible for me to have pushed. Yes, uh -huh. ruthlessly. <laughs> ruthlessly. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, uh, uh, let's, let's fight for it. Mm. All die and I die, like we say. Yes. Uh -huh. But I asked myself, die. yes, <laughs> ask myself, I have protection, I, can, I could protect myself. Mm. I have, as a governor, yes. I mean, it's difficult for anybody to get to me. Yes. But the Shekri man in the village, vulnerable, you know, of Urubo, Abubudu, those, mm. was it possible for me to have protected them? The answer was no. Now, the president of the country is an Ijo man. So if Shekri had to, had to go to war with Ijo at that point, the president will not, of course, support any side. But we know how, as commander in chief, mm. <laughs> the, the military forces, we have yeah. sympathy for his, uh, our gas people. Yes. You know, one of the things that helped us when Ambassador was in power was that uh, uh, the, 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 the military chiefs were sort of uh, uh, neutral. So they, they, they assisted Shakiris in terms of threat protection. But I, I just thought that if we went into another kind of, that kind of war at that time, there's no way we would have been protected. No, no, maybe no. we have just overrun us. Yes. So I just said, well, but just take it easy. Uh, mm. Allow this thing to go. Mm -hmm. you know? It's not a do or die for you. And I'm, I, and I'm happy I, did, I took that decision. But it turned out even the man who got it didn't get what he wanted in the, in the National Assembly. Well, that's another matter. <laughs> 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 well, good luck, Jonathan said a lot of things when they, when they had that uh, what we call the mini convention in Abuja. He was talking about how he ran the country very well, how he could have done well, better in terms of corruption and so on. Do you think Jonathan is living in denial? Well, it's, 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 it's not living in denial. You see, if you, if you, if you analyze Jonathan's admission very critically, hmm. um, he had his challenges, you know, but uh, uh, he, he also had his positives. Now, the if, if you were very little, yeah, well, well, you, you can say we're very little. Uh, you see, if you look at Jonathan's cabinet, mm -hmm. he had some of the best hands, from Okoje Ewala to Adeshino, those others. He had some of the best <laughs> hands, you know. But I think what happened um, in, 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 in that administration was that he took certain things for granted, and he took certain people for granted. Some people that work with him directly, he took them for granted. And I think that may have been his undoing. You know, there are people that just, uh, um, he gave room to, took initiatives you know, yeah, on their to, own. To, he gave room to people to do things on mm -hmm. their own mm -hmm. without putting his feet down. Well, like, for instance, look at all the stories uh, against um, the oil minister, Dizian. It's kind of um, scandalous. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to, I don't have the facts, I don't want to judge, I don't have the facts, but I know that the oil industry, the oil, you see, um, you see the mainstay of Nigerian economy. And when there's a challenge in the oil industry, mm. then what happened is bound to happen. And I know there were a lot of challenges in the oil industry. Challenges of theft, which was so brazen and so open, mm. you know, a lot of oil was lost. Challenges of some decisions that really affected this country, and I must, I must, I must emphasize one of them. Mm. You know, the oil companies, the majors, they were, they were, they were di especially share, they were divesting their interests in the oil. They were selling them to, to other private investors. Yeah. Now, the initial agreement was that any company that bought the the the, the, the shares of Shell, uh, Shell will 
assist those companies by using their previous facility. Okay. It is the companies that we operate, you know, like Seplat. And the only company that succeeded in doing that was Seplat. But the sales after Seplat, those that bought the, 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 the oil um, 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 facilities after Seplat were not allowed to operate. What happened? Uh, they said the operations will be done by MPDC. Yes. And MPDC was the operating arm of an NPC. Yes. And MPDC had no capacity whatsoever. To do anything. At all. And so they started so, so, paralyzed so, activities. So, apart from paralyzing. Now, I raised alarm that then. You know, <laughs> Guardian carried the front page. Yeah. What did I see the next? I was someone that was, I was, people were sent to me. Uh, also raised alarm. You know, it's people better. were sent to me. The next thing I saw people in Asaba, mm -hmm. the man top management of NAPC, they were in Asaba. Mm -hmm. uh, some friends, oh, I'm trying to pull that. Uh, to, to pull. I said, no. But see, because, what might happen? Because N NPDC did not have the capacity. A lot of wells were left untouched. And what, what was the effect? The effect was that there's what they call the Christmas key, uh, tree, which is like the cap of the wells. Mm. You know, the effect was that illegal bunkers, it was so easy for them. What they just do, what they were doing was to go to the well. Of course, there was no security. They just remove the Christmas cap. You know, it's like removing the, 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 the cover of a bottle of Coke. Okay. Yeah? Instead of, if, if you want to take the, the, the drink, yeah. instead of illegally, instead of maybe busting it to take it, you just remove the cover, <laughs> you remove the cover, yeah. and you put your pipe, maybe you, uh, uh, and you start sucking, yeah. you know. So that was what was happening. It was so easy for people, for illegal bunkers. They would remove the Christmas, they would just put the Christmas, remove the Christmas uh, cap, yeah. put it down, suck as much fuel as they could, mm. you know. And of course, maybe sometimes cover it or not cover it. Mm -hmm. So the whole area, so there was so much theft. Apart from the fact that MBTC could not uh, meet up with the, with the capacity, with the quantity, you know, because they didn't have the capacity. There was also so much theft. Uh, mm -hmm. And that affected our economy because uh, we're now talking about, oh. then there were other issues too. How much, uh, we, 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 at a point, there was, I, I remember that we attended the meeting uh, of uh, revenue, and uh, there were six different people with the different figures of daily production of oil. Yep. Of oil. Uh, Nobody had it. Nobody, everybody, uh, Central Bank Governor had his own, own. Petroleum uh, Minister had his own, uh, NPC had, uh, had his own. I had mine because I was, I was monitoring Monitor, everywhere. Yes. You know, so in the month we used to put together what what was coming out of, out of Delta. Yeah. So th th there were six different figures, you know, of of. Who means that this Jonathan didn't have discipline yeah, sure, sure. when he was running the country? Well, I, I, I would not impose discipline in the system. Well, uh, you see, I, I would not put it. Uh, yes, he's the president, so you should, you should take, take some kind of responsibility. But it's not as simple as that, you know. It's not as simple as that. Uh, when you sit there. Uh, there's some level of trust for some yeah, of Yeah, but when you give your, trust, for some of as you know, if you give trust, uh, if, if the trust is not worthy, if the person is not worthy of the trust, you get him out and put somebody who is worthy of yeah, the I'm trust. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, not, uh, I'm not standing for him, yeah, because okay. there are some things I don't even know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, I, but I also think that uh, yeah. uh, there, 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 were, there were a lot of... Um, a lot of uh, what I'll call friends, he quote, who didn't mean well for this country. Yeah. You know, because many people that, I mean, I saw a lot of people that were going there and all that. All they were interested in was how to get, 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 get yeah. make their money, lift oil, make their money, yeah. and go. how it affected the economy. Uh, I think we had too many people who were, who were not, um, mm. who did not take the country to heart. Mm. Recently, you had a tiff with uh, Professor Pat Utomi uh, when he made a statement that. Uh, uh, the governors had already built houses and used all the resources in the state to build houses, and you, and you also lashed back. Uh, what is the state of that debate? No, no, no. <laughs> we, have, we have cooled down. <laughs> you have cooled down. Yeah, you, cool you, you, you also, you also he, he, he came out firing, and you came back firing back. No, no, no I didn't come back firing. What happened was that when he <laughs> came firing, it's really through the uh, Premier Times and Porch interview. Yes. Uh, I had prepared my own statement. <laughs> uh, statement. But somehow. It was also like firing back. <laughs> no, I did it, but I didn't release it. 
Yeah, yeah, but you made some statements. No, 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 no. Came no. Out. Uh, no. The, after my first reaction, yes, there was no other reaction. The that other was reaction, enough. Uh, no, no. What, what happened was that uh, after my first reaction, mm. he wrote something in Premier Times. Yes. He wrote something in, in Punch. Yes. You know, he, he granted a Punch interview. Yeah. Uh, where he said that he was already PhD when I was, you know, all those kind of yes. things. So I had prepared my response, but yeah. somehow. Uh, you know, there are people in life you you you, you respect a lot. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, somehow, I was called by Bishop Kuka. Okay. Uh, that same evening. Yes. Uh, he called me, <laughs> yeah. and he said, "Oh, but what are you? What is this that is happening between your part and all that?" Yeah. Uh, you know, so I grumbled. Mm -hmm. uh, I said, "No, no, 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 no." But uh, the way it is now, she just let it uh, let it go. That you mm -hmm. also talk to him. So I just that's why I just cut it off. But I, I think there's... But uh, you say you had said enough, even the first, the first time. Let's not go into it. We're interested in things like that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that is my friend. Mm -hmm. uh, well, finally, um, I'll ask you about uh, James Sibori. He has now come back to the country. Uh, I remember writing a column when he came back saying that... Uh, well, he has suffered enough. Uh, the other people who are also corrupt who have not been punished, and that well, he had served his time and so on. What was your view of him now that he has returned? Um, what's the relationship with him now? Yes, we must understand that uh, if you guess uh, uh, we have a blood relationship. He's yes. my cousin, and yes. if I'm more than cousin, we are brothers. Yes. You know? Um, grew up in the same house with mm. the same grandmother. Mm. Uh, the mother, you know, was our mother. Mm -hmm. Then my father was our father. Yes. You know, <laughs> so I'm, I'm um, like the elder brother. That's kind of yes. that kind of yes. setting. Yes. Um, we, we, he brought me into politics. Mm. And of course, you know the key role he played yes. in Nigeria. I become commissioner, SSG, mm -hmm. yeah. and eventually became. Uh, um, the governor. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, he had his challenge, and uh, he was out there, mm. you know, as, outside the country. But by God's grace, he's, he's, he's back to the country. Um, I know that people started all sorts of rumors. Mm. <laughs> which, uh, yeah, so, so you know, there's no way you can not have differences with somebody. Mm. Yes. You know, even if the twins from the same womb. Yes. Uh, there, yeah. there were challenges. That we had differences, especially in who becomes the next governor and all that. Yeah. But as soon as I, I went and uh, we discussed it, you know, for several hours, um, I cooled down, you know, mm. and we agreed. That's how we, we mm -hmm. continue. But people started all sorts of stories. Mm. So we're just laughing, you know. Mm. We, 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 we found it uh, amusing between the two of us. All we discussed some of these, these mm. stories, we mm. find it amusing. Mm. Uh, and people thought that uh, when he came back, we're going to set blues, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they were surprised that uh, yeah. uh, uh, when he came back, even at his Thanksgiving dinner, he made some statements that surprised yeah. um, everybody. Uh, and that same day too, we uh, went to his house. You know, for just have a reception, and people were surprised that they saw two of us eating from the same yeah. pot. Yeah. You know, <laughs> out of banga soup. Yes, uh, you know, like we used to do as young That's people. We, 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 we were eating from the same pots. He had his own goo somewhere. I had my own goo, but we used to sit on the same. You know, uh, it was something we did unconsciously. We didn't plan it, uh, but I know that people made some comments on that. I ah, see these people want to see the fight. So we 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 are together. He's my political leader. In the family, I'm his, I'm the leader. Uh, but when it comes to politics, it's it's, it's my political leader, and. Uh, um, discussed almost every day, mm. you know, both national and, mm. and state politics. Mm. Um, we discuss. It's, um, it's, uh, you know, politics is his life. Yes. Uh, so he's, he's still in politics, uh, uh, trying to, to, to recoup some of the political uh, losses, which, which is of course, also, also trying to set up his, his, his businesses. Um, so that's, that's where we are. So finally, um, you used to play tennis a lot when you were governor in the state house. 
You still play tennis? Uh, Minimal, just did. Uh, I had uh, some challenges in my right shoulder. <laughs> in fact, I just came back when we did an MRI. Okay. And, uh, so I need to reshape my shoulder. shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was, that I, I love tennis. I, yeah. I, I, so now I play minimally. All right, we've been with uh, His Excellency Dr. Emmanuel Udoha, and uh, we are happy to have had him on this show. Thank you very much, sir, for being here. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs>